Hey guys, welcome back to Mastering Gaming Studios. And on Monday, we talked about Shadow and the Warp and how to maximize our funky special rule to its fullest potential. And one thing I always stressed in that is that there's one of two units that really goes well with it, uh, the Neuro Tyrant and more importantly, the Neuro Lictor. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the Neuro Lictor a bit more in depth, how we can really use it, how to use it and maximize the sheer potential that Tyrants have because we need everything we can got, get right now. Uh, Tyrants are struggling. We have pretty low strength. It hurts, or it's tough to uh, take out big targets. And the Neuralictor really is one of our only ways to get around that. So I'm going to give a pretty good deep dive into the Neuralictor today. Hopefully you guys grab a thing or two. You can learn from it and learn why I bring two of these as a mandatory in every single one of my lists going forward with the Tyranids. So, sounds good. Do like and subscribe to stay updated on all of our content here at Maelstrom Game Studios. Thank you to all of you wonderful members. You'll see the names at the end of the video. And let's dive into today's video. So like all of my deep dives for the Tyrion Codex, uh, this one's no different. We've got a profile overview. We're going to look at the special rules, the important things, uh, detachment support, because there are some in there, uh, some combos and play style, and the damage support. Not so much the damage this thing put puts out, but how it can affect the damage for the Tyranids. So looking at the profile, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, recently, in the uh, this is filming on March... 17th 2024 uh, within the last balance data slate uh, the neuroelector has got a big point increase from 65 points to 80. now i understand because these things are so crucial and so good for the tyrannids why bumping the points up however at the same time they are so crucial for the tyrannids that bumping their points up really made it so we can't bring three of them we're stuck to two of them and uh yeah it's it's not great for us. So, base profile here at 80 points these days. Movement 8, toughness 5, a 4-up save with a 4-up in bone, 7 wounds, leadership 7, and OC of 1. Uh, very good durability right off the bat. A 4-up armor save, which could be a 3-up in cover. A 4-up in bone save, which is likely what you'll be taking all the time. And 7 wounds is, is a lot. 7 is a lot more, as, you know... I was anticipating these guys came out to have five wounds, but seven is fantastic. Uh, they've got good speed, and you're going to need that to get them to where they need to go. If you choose to fight with them in melee, they got six attacks at hitting on two, strength six, AP minus two, one damage, uh, and they are precision. So they're good at taking out smaller four wound characters if you need to, but I will stress this right way. Do not lose your Neurolictors unless you absolutely need to send one into melee. This is something I still get, uh, get in trouble with. I'm used to having three where I would play risky with one, conservative with two. Now without that third one, you really do have to play conservative with both of them. So be careful there. They're durable, but they're not that durable. So special rules that these guys have, which is really important. So first off, their keywords, they got a ton of great ones. Infiltrator, uh, you can deploy them up the board. Lone Operative, they cannot be shot outside of 12 inches. And Stealth, they're always going to be hit at minus one at range. Uh, so those are great. Uh, in terms of their, special, their other special rules, Feeder Tendrils is fun. It won't come up too much, but it's a fun little one in case. Uh, if they kill a character, you gain a CP. Again, if you already are planning to discard a secondary or you have the Swarm Lord, you're going to get your CP anyway, but if none of those are applicable, bonus CP. Uh, Neural Disruption, this isn't a fantastic ability, is in your command phase, you can force an enemy unit to, within 12 inches to take a Battle Shock test. Now it is in the command phase, so you do have to position these guys really well so they can maximize how many Battle Shocks they're giving off, but still, it's something to think about and it's a great ability. The big one though, Psychological Saboteur, while an enemy was in 12 inches of this model, if that enemy is battle shocked, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract one from the hit roll, great. But most importantly, each time a friendly Tierden model makes an attack that targets that unit, 
add one to the wound roll. Again, like I said earlier, Tyranids have a very low strength compared to what they probably should be. I don't know if that was by design or, you know, first codex syndrome where they really wanted us to rely on these neurolictors to do our damage, but we need it. Our, our Nord emissaries are only strength nine. The Tau Crisis Suit Commander Farsight in the new codex that was just shown off for the Tau, uh, he's strength 10 on a sword. So it's really just kind of hammers home. Terrans are under strength and we need this plus one to wound to do significant damage. So some detachment benefits for the Neuralector. Uh, first off, in Assimilation Swarm, Crusher Stampede, and Invasion Fleet, they are great tools for assisting monsters in melee uh, with battle shock and flipping objectives. Often in some of these lists, Assimilation Crusher, and depending on your flavor of Invasion Fleet, it favors the monsters which have low OC, so they're going to struggle to just hold the objective like you could do in some of the other ones that favor using lots of gargoyles and termagons and hormagons and stuff. Uh, so allowing our monsters to get plus one to wound and flip objectives, perfect, you need that. Now, in all the other detachments, this, that still applies. It's still great to have, but in Subnaptic Nexus, we have that mortal wound strat for failed battle shock. It's just another way to cause damage. In Unending Swarm, this, which favors the Termagants, a lot of Termagants and some Hormagons and Gargoyles, uh, having a enemy be battle shocked essentially doubles the damage output of a lot of our Gaunts, really. Uh, you go from, you just say, unit of spine fist Termagants, you know, they're, or, they're twin links. You're going to be wounding most targets on fives or sixes, so, you know, they'll do whatever damage. But as soon as they get the enemy gets battle shocked, okay, now those are fours twin linked or fives twin linked. You really start to amp up the damage that small units can do to big creatures. And finally, in Vanguard Onslaught, the one that features all the Lictor esque beings, it has gains the Vanguard Vanguard Invader keyword and allows them to benefit fr from all the fancy stratagems as well as fall back and charge, which for a Neuralictor, it can be very good because if it gets stuck in there fighting, maybe, you know, you don't want to get tagged too much longer. Uh, just fall back, charge, you get your fight first. Unlike all the other Lictor specimens, Neuralictors don't have fight first. You got to be a little careful with that one there. So some combos and play style with the Neuralictor. It's, uh, it's a tactical one you have to just try over and over to learn. There's plenty of times you'll mess up. I've messed up plenty of times. Uh, the big thing is the plus one to wound is huge. It roughly increases or equals a 17% damage increase to the Tyran Codex, uh, as well as allowing you to flip those primary objectives for maximum scoring potential. That 17% damage increase, like I've harped on it a number of times, is the big back row. We need to utilize their tricks in order to get that going off. So for infiltrate, I like to infiltrate them into no man's land. However, I want them to be in range of certain No Man's Land objectives. So whether you, if you're playing uh, player place terrain, try and set up some place for, for them to lurk that is within 12 inches of the objective. Maybe there's a building on the objective anyway. Keep them up there, but do not put them too far forward where your opponent will, you know, turn one charge them or they will move a certain amount of distance, get within 12 inches, and then shoot them. You do want to be a little reserved, and all you really will end up doing with these guys on turn one is maybe infiltrating them six inches up the board. Maybe a little bit more depending on the opponent's army, but you really, really do not want to lose these uh, in your first turn or your second turn. A good opponent who knows how to play against Tyranids, if you leave one of these exposed and able to die they're going to do what they can to kill one because killing one of these just cripples the damage output of a Tyranid army. You want to be able to, when using the Neuralictors, direct your army flow, uh, your movement, your damage output towards the battle-shocked enemy units. When it comes to that, I like to put a lot of my shooting units in strategic reserve. Pyrovers, pyrovers, pyrovores, zonethropes, exocrines. I like to be able to keep those things in strategic reserve, keep them protected, and as soon on turn two or three, 
a good unit is Battle Shocked. I'll walk them on the table to get that line of sight and cause that damage, but my opponent hopefully can't do anything about. But, and then also a little note for these. Remember, two Neuroelectors can Battle Shock the same unit. So if you really end up positioning your models in a way that you could be Battle Shocking the same and it's a key unit you gotta kill, you can do it that way. Uh, some units that do pair well, well with them, the Neuro Tyrant obviously giving off a boosted Shadow on the Warp. Death Leaper has that minus one built in additionally. And the Screamer Killer, when it shoots, it causes Battle Shock check at minus one. So if it shoots something and that becomes Battle Shock, you want to keep your Neural Lictor in range. That'll give that Screamer Killer a huge damage increase in uh, the fight phase when it happens. There are a couple other units that cause Battle Shock. I know the Moloch can do it, and the Horus Vex has some funny abilities that cause Battle Shock. But really, it's just about positioning these things. And again, only having two of these, these two of them these days is rough because now you have two on two of the No Man's Land objectives, whereas before you could have one each babysitting a No Man's Land objective, which was perfect. It allowed you to really, really mess with your opponent's scoring game. Uh, but you have to pick and choose these days. So pick which two objectives you want to focus on. Uh, and then maybe have one be the center and one be one you think you're going to put a lot of your pressure on to help the Neuroelector score that way and move them throughout the board like that. Uh, so in a bit of conclusion, hopefully this helped a bit. Uh, it's hard to totally describe how to use the Neuroelector best without just you know telling you to try it over and over. Watch my battle reports. I try to go in depth with how I use my Neuroelectors. Keep an eye out for that stuff. It does just take practice. It is probably the biggest chess piece in the tier and codex because you want to finesse them so much that they are still doing something every turn, but you're not sacrificing them when they go to do their things. Cause their battle shocks, get that plus one to wound. So they are currently an S tier unit. I think there are three units in the tier and codex that are currently propping up our win rate. It's only sitting at like a 45% right now. Without the Neuroelector, without the Gargoyles, and without the Biovore, we'd be way in the 30s probably. Uh, this thing just helps us do so much more in the scoring and the damage phase. Again, go back if you haven't seen my video on Monday about Shadow and the Warp. Check that one out because that I talk again on how to maximize Shadow and the Warp and I do tie in some of the Neuroelector stuff here. So it's not just the Neuroelector does Neuroelector things, although it is a little bit of that. It's how does the Neuroelector synergize throughout your army? Um, how can you position them in a way that, yes, they cause battle shock, but great, they caused it. Now can my army capitalize on it? Do you have the right ranged units? It's kind of unfortunate that Tyrion is this way, at least for my opinion. Tyrion's are much more shooty army this edition. Uh, they just need to be. The melee isn't there as much as we want it to be. So having the right shooting, setting up your army to know that, okay, I'm going to get my Neuroelectors in range of these objectives, and I'm going to battle shock units that get there, and I will have these units to follow up the battle shock with damage output. It's just something to think about here. If I could make one change to battle shock, which would really help this whole shenanigan stuff with the Neuroelector, it would be that when your opponent's battle shocked, and then it goes to the command phase, Right now, they just become on battle shock. Like, oh, okay, we're not scared anymore. If they had to retest again, even if it's just a standard test, no modifiers, anything, if they had to retest, that's huge because now that's another test they have to pass in order to become on battle shocked. And if they stay battle shocked, then they stay battle shocked for the whole battle round, essentially, and allow you to capitalize on those models even more instead of just, oh, I battle shocked you at the end of the fight phase. Okay, I don't care. It's my command phase battle shock reset. So it's good. It is uh, using these guys to flip objectives. It could be the difference between winning and losing a game and doing significant damage output. But that's pretty much what I got. Hopefully, hopefully you, you pick up a thing or two about Neuroelectors. They really are just such a crucial unit in the Tyrion Codex. Um, so there's a reason most people, I think, have two or three of them in their collection already. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time here at Maelstrom Gaming Studios. <laughs>